Uh, someone said in the comments section once, I go through the pain so you don't have to, and it was a painful summer. Um, I actually ran into a flood in my basement that was the result of a small crack on the outside, or what looked like a small crack, which when you, you got a shovel out, wasn't so small. This went down several feet, um, and it took a lot to get it fixed. Thankfully, I had insurance. This could have been a nightmare. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use a, uh, a standard RJ45 cable and how to connect that up to a Fabaro flood sensor and show you exactly how we can get this to um, act like a lead just using standard RJ45. This is your standard computer networking cable. Uh, you probably got one of these hanging out. You probably got one um, coming with one of your accessories, to be honest. So let's get the Favaro flood sensor out of the box. I've already done a review on this. I, I really do like this device. Um, the Favaro devices are solid. Um, I haven't had any problems with them. The biggest problem I've had, frankly, is finding replacement batteries when they run out, um, which has been wonderful. If I would have had one of these in here, perhaps I would have had a better time. So let's get into this. You, you can see we got the box here. We got the instructions. We got the Favaro sensor. We've got the instruction booklets, and one thing that I did notice here is that I didn't see in here anything about being able to attach leads, right? So this wasn't actually in the instructions. Um, I contacted Fabaro Support on Twitter, and they did tell me that this was possible and kind of pointed me to some instructions and some um, a little unclear information on the kind of wire. So I wanted to, after we, after getting this working, I wanted to really share this with you guys. So this is the Fabaro. You've got the three leads there. But if we open this up and look on the inside here, you can see we've got this little blue thing. And this is we can connect an external lead, which we can punch through the wall and then push down into the floor. So you can see we've got the little screws here, little places to put in your cables. And this allows me to mount this simply on the wall and then push the lead down through the drywall underneath the floor so that in the event that I get a crack or, or something else in the foundation, if this happens again, I will be able to have preventative knowledge of this. I will, I will be able to get it to it in time to say, you know, hey, look, there is a problem. So um, really simple here. We're going to cut this cable. Then we're going to shave a little bit of the sheath off here. Again, be careful not to cut the wires. You want to make sure um, that you, you don't cut the wires Otherwise, this won't work. You need to make sure you have good contact. So this is a standard RJ45 Cat5e. Um, Cat6 would work for this as well, I am sure. Cat3 as well, to be honest. We just need to make sure we've got con conductivity. We're going to take a pair of these, or a couple of pairs if you want to double up, and we're just going to shave off the ends of them here to expose the wire. And then we're going to do nothing more than just put them in those little holes so that we can connect and then put this underneath in the um, in the floor. So once we've got the wires here shaved off and the wiring, the, the actual wire inside exposed, this is pretty simple. We are going to just touch those in and make sure that we're going to get the contact in there properly. So you can see here that we've got contact. And then I've got a cap of water over here that we're going to show you that as soon as I put this in, this thing should fire. So let's uh, let's see if we can get that water there so you can see that. And we'll touch this in. So you can see there, you can hear the sound, you can hear see the red light flashing. This is bad, water bad. That's what I learned this summer. Water very, very bad. And that's really it. Um, so one thing that I do want to point out here is the, the plastic casing around the Favaro. If we put the case all back together, you can see here there's really there's no place for the wire to come out. Um, and as well, there's also no place to mount this, right? So we're going to have to do a little, uh, a little cosmetic altering of the case. But if we open this back up, you can see that on the inside here, you've actually got two places where it's fairly obvious that that's where the mounting screws would go. Um, and then we're just going to have to cut out the bottom and just carve a little notch out of here so that you're going to be able to fit in um, the wires, right? So again, you're going to have to cut the case a little bit. And other than that, you will be end up with a finished product that looks a little like this. As you can see, new hardwood floors. 
The Fabaro flood sensor has been mounted on the wall. There is no cables hanging out of it. Um, the, the cables are actually pushed straight down through the dry, drywall um, and into the subfloor so that if there's any moisture that comes in, if I get a, if I get a leak, those whatever happens, I will know about it now before it becomes a huge issue and um, I end up having you know my entire subfloor rotted out potentially the uh, the mold it's just a this is not something you want to go through take it from me and with that if you guys have any questions comments um, please put those in the uh, the comments below I would love to hear those if you haven't subscribed already please do that uh, it really really does help Thumbs up are always appreciated. Get those likes in. And if you want to learn to make your house just a little bit smarter using Apple HomeKit, please check out my Udemy course. There will be a link to that in the video notes below. Thanks very much. See you guys soon.